Hey guys, the Washington Capitals are a good hockey team. They won four in a row, and they, they told Sidney Crosby he can go back get not playing because it didn't make a difference at all. Wow. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, guys, Washington Capitals beat the heck out of the Pittsburgh Penguins the other night. Hello, everyone. I'm Tower Cool, the insider to the insiders and the rambling, bambling, stambling man, the host of Locked On Capitals. Uh, so, uh, guys, uh, that was... That was a game I wasn't ready for. That was a game I was not mentally prepared to see on a Sunday night. Let me just give some context here. Actually, no, first of all, I must say thank you all very much for listening and watching this episode of Locked On Capitals here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you very much for making it your first listen and first watch of the day. As you all know, free and available on all platforms. So here is the context of why I was such crazy. So why everything was so crazy. So, yes, I did not do a locked on now for the game following the Columbus Blue Jackets win, following Ovechkin passing Brett Hall. Now, the reason why, if you guys remember my Thursday night locked on now, because I was in Denver calling calling Western Michigan hockey when they took on the Denver Pioneers. So I was a little preoccupied this weekend, but I was able to watch the game, see the games, see the great game for Garnet Hathaway against the Blue Jackets. Yeah, we all pegged that one to be a thing on Friday night, but so we, we flow, we fly back. We had the two games Friday and Saturday, and then we fly back Sunday. So today at the time of this recording, and I I remember thinking to myself, okay, I'll get back just in time to, to start the game. I got home at about six 30, six 30 ish Eastern time. Uh, We flew out at one o'clock local time, mountain time in Denver. And yeah, the game was just, well, pardon me. The way the game started was about what we would have thought. 8-8 were the shots in the first period. 2-1 lead for Washington Capitals. Martin Fairvari, after a turnover by Brandon Russ, leads to Tom Wilson, giving a nice feed for Fairvari. He scores his second of the season, second of his career, and it's 1-0. Awesome, cool, great. A little bit later, Alex Ovechkin with a nice slap pass there to Garnet Hathaway. Third goal in two games for Mr. Hathaway. Garnet, you glad he went to the net on that one. Makes it 2 nothing. But then just a couple minutes later, Jake Gensel decides to spoil the party. Nice little play out in front. Beats Vanacek. It's 2-1 after 20. Okay. This is what this is what we kind of expected in a game like this. Sidney Crosby's back in the lineup. It's going to be a good, hard, tough hockey game. That's what we like to see between Pittsburgh and Washington since the 5 6 season when the two teams were dog crap. That's what we like to see them do. Compete hard and try to battle against each other. Even though, you know, Pittsburgh's missing their, some of their top guys and, and uh, you know, Washington's missing a couple of their top guys as well. But, hey, you know what? The ones that are playing are playing hard. I mean, at one point, shoot, Sidney Crosby was chucking Martin Fairvari into the boards like he's Braun Strowman throwing some jobber into the barricades in a wrestling match. Can't say the company because... He doesn't work for that company anymore. Anyways, the second period happened, and I had to blink because, first of all, the shots were 15-9. to nine. But just the fact of the matter was that Washington just seemed a lot more in control. That was the thing for me, was like how, it, how tough they were playing against them, how much they did not allow the... Washington or the Pittsburgh Penguins to really get too many great A chances. Vanacek played well. I'm, I'm not going to deny it. He looked solid. He played tough and ended up making 25 saves in the win. But all of a sudden, just it's, they, things started falling into place. First of all, a great, excuse me, the I almost jumped to the third period already. Second period, a turnover caused by Connor Sheary in the neutral zone gives the puck up to Large Eller. Nice play to get it in the zone. Stops on a dime. Lars Eller, noted finesse player, opens it up for Daniel Sprong, who goes off to the left side. Beautiful one-timer. Sprong, his third goal of the season, makes it 3-1. to one. Gives him a little bit of space. Okay, perfect. A little bit of breathing room. A couple minutes later, the next shot that actually lands on goal. Washington with a mad scramble. Sprong could have deflected in his second of the game. Missed the net. Connor Sheary grabs it and just waits. Waits. Waits again. Thanksgiving's in a week and a half, and he shoots and he scores. 
Connor Sheary is able to snipe it through literally a massive calamity. That is his third of the season to make it four to one. And man, let me tell you, for some reason, Connor Sheary just showing that he is still a very dynamic player. The former Pittsburgh Penguin, Lars Eller, showing that he's a solid, skillful player. And Daniel Sprong is there as well, showing that he can be a finisher of some sort. One that I thought was going to do a little bit more of that this season. Obviously, the season is still early. That line was playing pretty well tonight, you know, I, not just because they were on the score sheet, but also the fact of the matter was they were getting a lot of chances. They were getting, they were creating opportunities. They were getting in on the attack. They were not allowing Pittsburgh to really control the puck, which is something that those, you know, you need guys in your bottom six, or in this case, guys that are playing like your second line to do that. That's what they did in the second period. Shots ran up, like I said, 15 to 9, 23 17 in the third period, but it's still 4 1. Lots of stuff can happen. And then all of a sudden, the top line says, now wait a second here. We have not had our name set enough tonight. Tom Wilson goes in on a four check, forces a little bit of push in the corner. Then all of a sudden, Ovechkin says, I can hit two, hits Brian Dumoulin. Puck squirts out in front. Kuznetsov snipes it on Tristan Jari. His sixth goal of the season does the little Tweety Bird there in the Battle of the Birds, the Eagle, making it five to one. And then not too much longer later, Sidney Crosby gets called for a penalty. The whole Capital One Arena is celebrating like they won the cup all over again. And that allows Tom Wilson on a beautiful feed from, that is right, kids, Evgeny Kuznetsov. He's coming down the right wing and does Wilson. Sneaks a little boop through the five hole of Tristan Jari. 6-1 winners, Washington tonight. Man. The, dare I say, perfect game to end the weekend for Washington. Total shots, 32-25. Sorry, 24 hit fan check. 25 were the total shots for Pittsburgh in this one. 32 for the cap. So apropos, as we like to say, Washington out shooting the other team. One for three on the power play. We mentioned the goal from Wilson, which Carlson got the secondary assist, by the way. Seventh assist for Johnny Carlson. That was the lone power play goal in the game. It's only 27-18, but obviously, yes, Crosby throwing Martin Fayervari into the boards is going to get everyone's attention because it's Sidney Crosby against the Caps. Duh. But listen, good, solid win. That's what you want to do. Four-game win streak, by the way, for the Caps now. They have not lost since losing to... Philadelphia. I almost forgot which one it was. I remember they lost to Florida in overtime, but that was not the loss I was talking about. But right now, also, here's the thing. We talked about how good the Metro has been, and I know they're not going to play Metro team for another week or so, but the Caps are now 4-1 and one against Metro Division teams. Their wins, obviously, coming against Pittsburgh tonight, Columbus, and New York. Who was the fourth team? New Jersey. That was the other team. Their one loss so far to Philadelphia. They'll get the cracks at them later, though, this season. Don't worry. They do not play Pittsburgh, though, again until December. So, obviously, a little bit of time to lick the wounds, if you will, for Pittsburgh, who have slowly stumbled down here as the season kind of worn on here in the standings. Let me just quick pull these up here because I totally forgot to actually pull them up prior to this because I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to. So, as of right now, with the loss tonight, have they added the game in there? Yes, they have. Pittsburgh is the only team in the National Hockey League to have, or in the Metropolitan Division, not the NHL, the Metropolitan Division that is not above 500. Pittsburgh is 5 5 and 4 as a result of losing tonight. Now, the reason why they're not in last, that's because New York, the Islanders, have only played 11 games. They're, you know, trying to space out the fact that they've been on the road the entire time. I really hope they, when's their next, when's their first home game? It is the 20th. Yeah, this Saturday is their first home game against Calgary. Uh, just a quick aside here on that. Can I just say it's a little dumb? You know, you're opening a new arena, like opening a new arena. This ain't the Barclay Center when they just kind of jumped in there. Wouldn't you want to play like the Rangers or the Devils or Philly? I'm trying to think of another rival for the Islanders, like P Pittsburgh, Tampa. Like have one of the have one of their current or old rivals come in and play them in their first game in their new arena. Like, do something like that. That's what I'm trying to get at. Don't be Calgary. Or, heck, if you really want to go, if you want to go old school, just bring in Edmonton. Connor McDavid lights up three in the opening night. Okay, maybe not. Maybe that would be a bad thing. So don't do that. But I'm just saying, if I would have written out the schedule, I would have done it that way. But that's just me. So, once again, though, big win for Washington. They get a lot of momentum going into 
the West Coast trip. No longer just the California trip. Nay, nay, kids. Nay, nay. We have now made it a West Coast trip entirely because it is not just LA, Anaheim, San Jose. We have thrown now the Seattle Kraken into this. Yes, that is right. The Caps will get the first crack at the Kraken this coming week. In fact, their first game is officially against the Kraken. I had it right above me. Where is it? Where is it? Where am I at here? Oh, there we go. Uh, next Sunday, November 21st. I'm going to say this right now. I will watch the games, but you probably will not see any lockdown nows for me. If you do, you'll probably see them like the next morning or well, the game will end at one o'clock, like l- later that day following the day of the game starts because I do have sleep I need to have. And unfortunately, it just kind of works out where it's going to be a little tough to do that because, you know, one o'clock in the morning, I want to go to bed. I don't really want to talk about stuff right away because you want to see bags under these eyes. You want to see big droopy eyes like this if you're watching on the YouTube channel? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. No, you don't. So please don't be angry if I don't get immediate reactions right away. That's just not how things are going to work. But we'll be there. We have Anaheim on Tuesday, LA on Wednesday, back-to-back, and then Saturday, Sunday, San Jose, and then quickly up to Seattle. Take on the struggling Kraken, but as we will see, the second half of back-to-back, especially out west, going from California up to Washington State, it is not going to be an easy go for the Capitals when they go to Death Valley plus Seattle. Unfortunately, Seattle needs to earn the reputation of Death Valley, which they have not done yet. And guess what, guys? The California teams are good this year. They are not last. Back Vancouver and Seattle said the bottom of that Pacific division, which we did not think was going to be the case at all. Dare I said I picked Seattle to finish fourth, and I'm regretting that decision every single time I watch Seattle play. All respect towards Everett Fitzhugh and Johnny Horsland because they are doing a magnificent job despite the team kind of playing how we more or less expect an expansion team to play. So with that, big win for the Caps. Four in a row now, riding high going in to the bit this big road trip before coming back not next week technically well it'll be like 10 days they're going to be back on wednesday in washington take on the montreal canadians on the 24th right before thanksgiving so we're going to get to some other stuff here obviously we got the cool caps coming up here later on in the show but also we're going to talk about nick dowd nick dowd making a little bit of news today because he signed an extension with the washington capitals which made me go pardon Has this guy played more than two games this year? But it's okay. We'll talk about the contract and what that means for future contracts for the Caps coming up here in just a little bit. But, guys, does this sound familiar to you? You've got one device that lets you watch the game live. Another lets you stream your favorite shows. And then you got your best friend's login for the good stuff, sports highlights on your phone. But I'm going to tell you guys about something that makes it a lot easier, lots less hassle, and a simple way to get your TV together. Direct TV stream. Brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. So Nick Dowd, Nicholas Doudius. The firstiest signs to sign an extension with the Washington Capitals. This one was a little interesting for me. A, because he is still on injured reserve. He is, though, on the last year, the 31-year-old of his minimum wage contract. Now, what we've seen from Nick Dowd, and I'm not going to say this season, and it's no disrespect towards him by any stretch, but the fact of the matter is this. He's played in nine games so far. He's been on injury reserve with a lower body injury. It's undisclosed. He's been skating. He skated a little bit today. But the problem is this. He has yet to really make an impact on this team this year. Yet they sign him to an extension, and I'm not angry about it because because here's here's the stages I went through with the Nick Dowd signing. I see the news. I see Samantha Pell tweeted out, Tarek Elbashir, all the great guys over there, J.J. Reagan, the same way. And I said to myself, why? He hasn't done anything. He's been hurt. What, what can he bring to the table here? Well, as we all know, he is a good bottom six forward and a guy that can be a real key depth center here. 
But the the part that gets me is, and the part that makes this all a little bit more manageable and not as much panic for me, and that is the the value of the contract money wise. Last season he had quite the Cy Young year. Of course, he scored eleven goals and four assists in fifty six games. He's only hit over the twenty point mark twice. Once with the Caps in eighteen nineteen, and then once back in his first full season in the NHL when he put up twenty two points with the LA Kings who that's still the still guys the last LA Kings team or no second to last team second to last team to make the playoffs because they forgot they make it in 17 18 as well regardless that was kind of like his really his big performance his big breakout if you will was the 6 and 16 and 16 17 oh gosh don't say 16 three times fast together you'll get your tongue all backwards and sideways but the fact of the matter is this I really enjoyed the contract because I see $1.3 million AAV. Now, I'm call me Mr. Frugal. Call me Mr. You know, how you know how can we save a buck? Call because I am partially somewhere in my in my mutt heritage Dutch. My wife is also Dutch as well. But the fact of the matter is this: in a flat cap era, you cannot be just dropping cash like nobody's business. And you know, not a bad contract at all given the fact that you still have Ovi signed through 2026 you have three more years or two years after this year of Kuznetsov at 7.8 one more year of Tommy Wilson which is his value going to go up I don't know if he wants to stay a Washington Capitol it may not go up a whole lot but you do have a whole lot of UFAs after this season you have Lars Eller Carl Haglin Garnet Hathaway Connor Sheary all going to be UFA is not probably not this year, but next after next season. So 2023 summer is going to be important. After this year, you have to worry about Brett Leeson and Daniel Sprong. Sprong has Arbright's. Leeson does not. And Leeson's obviously been playing been in the lineup a lot, scored a couple goals. I'm not saying he's going to be a hard, you know, qualifying offer, but the fact of the matter is this, you have to worry about spending money, which does also include Justin Schultz and Dennis Chalowski and Matt Irwin on the back end. Chalowski and Irwin, who have not played at all. So, or really not played a whole lot. Or Chalowski obviously has not played a whole lot since getting claimed off of waivers. Those can obviously be contracts worked out at a later date. But more or less of the story is you need to worry about getting guys that you're going to need depth players eventually. And getting nicked out, signed for three years at a very manageable number is important. I really like that a lot. Not a bad contract by any stretch. I will say, though, one thing you do have to remember and you may be wondering why, how in the world can Vitek Vanacek and Neely Samsonov be putting so much great work in? Well, kids, because this is the last year of their contracts as well. And both are RFAs with arbitration rights. Yeah, qualifying offers. Ryan McClellan, good on you, man. You're doing a job that I'm not going to want to do because, boy, not an easy gig to have whatsoever. Yeah, being an NHL general manager, I... I, I could try to give you what I would do in a situation like this with goaltenders, but the fact of the matter is this Vanacek is the one making less than 717,000 and Ilya Samsonov is the one that's making two mil Samsonov and Vanacek are both going to want to get raises, but here's the question who is going to be worth more at the end of the season. And unfortunately you're going to have to sign your number one goaltender first to see what you can do with the other, because that will be extremely important. Because also you have to remember for contracts that are under a million, uh, you have to qualify offer at least 110% of that contract. Anything over 1 million has to be 105% of the current deal. So you're going to have to at least pay qualifying the base qualifying minimum qualifying offer. You're going to have to at least offer Samsung up more than you would Vanna check. But on the flip side, the way Vanacek is playing, Samsonov is going to value is going to be less than Vanacek, which means you have to pay Vanacek more than Samsonov, who's going to be here. And I whack my microphone, so it's going to be a very you know, higher number for one goaltender and a lesser for the other. However, they're both going to be close to at least six million, right? Two times one point zero five. Carry the two. Yeah, I don't know what the exact number is. I'm not pulling out calculator right now. Try to figure out what those contracts would have to be. But it'll be a good chunk of money. And that is why there are people literally hired. Some There's a some assistant GM's job. They'll be like, all right, you figure out, make sure we can fit under the cap and keep these players. Good. 
That's why sometimes kids taking micro econ or statistics or whatever dumb math class you think is stupid in college is important because guess what? You may need it to run a hockey team. Dare I say. So, so yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting times coming up here for Washington this off season and certainly next as well with all those veterans hitting the possible UFA market. So we'll get to kill caps here in just a minute, guys, but it is time to talk about built bar. Perfect time for built bars because built bar is the new holiday dessert for some people based on something delicious and feel good about it. Did you guys know that one slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories and that's on the low end as well. That's not even including the cool whip you put on your pumpkin pie. Most built bars are only 130 calories with only four grams of sugar and plenty of protein to go with it. Low calories, low carbs, low fat, and the chocolate ones are covered in 100% chocolate. Built a bar is a great option when you're hungry, and if Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, go for a built bar or two. Nothing like built bar Black Fridays, because mark your calendar the day after Thanksgiving. Built bar will have a huge event with all sorts of surprises. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your first order. That is using the promo code LOCKED15, L O C K E D 1 5 at built.com for 15% off of your order. Our cool caps in the night are going to pause because we're going to give you the scores. We actually have the full slate of games at the time of recording this. Only one game was left and it's pretty much over. Anaheim was up 4-1 with Vancouver with 50 seconds left in the third period. So the Ducks still a good hockey team. My Lanta. It, it's crazy to see that the Ducks right now are th- heard in the division and actually did they count the calgary game calgary won yeah so calgary so right now the ducks will win and they'll be in second place the anaheim ducks guys are going to be in second place in the division with after winning over vancouver tonight the i'm saying it again i'm seeing it for all the kids in the back the anaheim no this is not 2011 when Corey perry was tearing up the league and winning mvp no, the Anaheim Ducks are second in the Pacific Division. No, Scott Niedermeyer is not on defense, kids. No, Paul Correa is not tearing up with Steve Ruchin. No, this Anaheim Ducks team with John Gibson, still Ryan Getzlaff, though, Cam Fowler, Ricard Raquel, and Trevor Zegras, of course, second in the division. I know we're a little over, we're a week and a half away from American Thanksgiving. That's the cutoff date. Well, we, or we can do December 1st, whatever. We'll, we'll have to wait and see when, when teams start to fall off, but... We're close to that point to seeing who's a real contender, guys. Anaheim is still there, and we can still talk about it. LA and San Jose are kind of tailing off a little bit right now. The Pacific Division only has two teams that are below 500, that being Vancouver and Seattle. The Central Division, which we thought was going to be the toughest division in hockey, uh, is not. But boy, oh boy, that's a crazy one right now because Calgary wins 4 nothing earlier over Ottawa. And poor sentence, man. Four ten and one right now. I, I was really, I was like, here come the Senators. This young Bright and Brady Kachuk's their captain. There, oh boy, they're back to where they were last season, at the beginning of last year. Boston picks up a big five two win over Montreal, and that big rivalry. Montreal is still struggling. Edmonton squeaks out a win over St. Louis on the road five four. Your winners there. The Rangers in a shootout. A shootout. Hell yeah, kids. The skills competition. Rangers beating the Devils 4-3 in the shootout. Games on Monday night. New York versus Tampa. Talked about that game. This one in Tampa, though, unfortunately, for the Islanders trying to get back on the winning track. And the only other game, Detroit and Columbus. Blue Jackets trying to take back from Detroit. The Red Wings, guys, on a three-game win streak. That offense is good. They were not too pleased by losing. No, pardon me. They were on a three-game win streak, trying to bounce back against Columbus after losing. But... Boy, well, they beat Montreal. They're trying to make it two in a row after the three-game win streak that was snapped by Washington. They'll try to do it tomorrow night. So the only two games tomorrow. Washington, like we said, will be back in action on Tuesday when they're in Anaheim to take on the Mighty Frogs. I'm kidding. No, the Anaheim Mighty Anaheim Ducks at 10 o'clock. If you get the Anaheim Mighty Frogs joke, you are definitely close to my age. Look up the Mighty Ducks cartoon in the first episode. That's all you got to know. Anaheim, home of the mighty frogs. My brother probably right now is watching this or listening and laughing his butt off because I forced him to watch that cartoon me a lot when when we were both kids. It it's so corny, but it's so great. While I used to have the action figures too, I was one of those kids. A cool caps of the night. 
Shiri, that Shiri Eller and Sprong line was awesome. I thought they played really good. Obviously, game change. I'm going to give two cool caps to six players. Eller, Sprong, and Shiri. All three of those guys, that line was playing extremely well in this one. Combined, let me make sure I got the numbers right on it. Sprong had two, two, and Eller had one. So a total of five points between the three of them. Sprong and Shiri each had a goal and assist, like I said, and one from Lars Eller and Apple on the goal from Daniel Sprong. Both were very effective. Uh, they were on the ice for the goal. One of the goals again, again, against a goal against that was Eller. At least I thought they played really well. They looked very solid. They looked comfortable in their own zone. Once again, they had the puck a lot Sprong himself. I mean, they only combined actually be, for five shots on goal between the, or no four out between the three of them. And still they, they weren't caught on the ice. They were not in bad situations. That's important from a line like that. And the top line, Ovi Wilson and Kuznetsov, Everyone gets two points, six points in the three of them. Ovi now has 14 assists, leads the team by far with 26 points. Holy moly. Listen, McDavid's going to win the Art Ross, barring something crazy. Dry will win the Rocket Richard Trophy, barring something crazy. Ovi could be an MVP candidate. <laughs> I know it's crazy that I say that, but I'm like, guys, look at the way he's playing right now. If he can keep this pace up, and I know he's old, and yes, it'll it, it'll plateau at some point, but holy moly, no Backstrom. We thought he needed Backstrom. The dynamic duo needs to be together if Ovechkin or Backstrom are racking up points. He's done it without him. Because Netsov obviously has been a big part of that line. Wilson has obviously done well. Wilson has 13 points now, four goals and nine assists after a goal and assist tonight. Because Netsov, 20 points. Yes, they're the only two. And yes, among the three of them, they are the three leading scorers in your hockey club. But then again, when I talked with actually Western Michigan Pat, coach Pat Fershweiler during this weekend, we are talking about Denver's top line. Well, when your top line is scoring a bunch of points, you're going to play well. You're going to be successful. Paraphrasing, of course. There's a lot more context to that. But the long story is, like, yes, if your top players are playing well and need your team, well, that's kind of how it's supposed to be. And that's what the Capitals have right now. Those are the cool caps of the night top line and the Eller Sprong and Shiri line, two lines that click tonight in the 6-1 win over the Pittsburgh Penguins. 9-2 and 4. Washington hanging in there at the Metropolitan Division that's still very competitive despite Pittsburgh trying to ruin it for everybody right now. No, nah, it's okay. They're only 500. I I'm not going to freak out that Pittsburgh's awful right now and and once again i say awful as a 500 team they are the worst team in the metropolitan division because they don't have malkin they've been missing this is only crosby's second game he came back from wrist surgery played one game against new jersey got on the covid list i'm sorry the fact that this team is 500 with tristan jar and casey de smith as their goaltenders with chris letang out as well and jeff carter out as well this team is 500 somehow like they have worked to be a 500 team and once you get your top guys, once everyone gets healthy, knock on wood for that team, this could be a much different game in December between these two teams, guys. Let's be honest. So I'm, I'm not counting Pittsburgh out yet. I think for them, it's too early. It may not be American Thanksgiving by the time they start turning things around, but I think Pittsburgh has a lot left to offer that we've seen so far in their early stages of their season. So that is it for this Monday, sorry, Sunday edition of Locked On Capitals. Thank you all very much for listening and watching. Be sure to follow us at Locked On Caps on Twitter. Catch us on your favorite podcatcher. And of course, on the Locked On Capitals YouTube channel. So you can watch me. You can listen to me. You can hear me with your eyes as well. Kind of. That doesn't, no, that does not make sense. That's not how the five senses work. It's okay. You can you can taste my the sound waves. You can see my feel and smell my my eyes i don't know you just just calm down it doesn't make sense to me either be sure to follow us every single day for daily content covering the lockdown capitals now go make your second listen of the day locked on bets your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs locked on bets hosted by your boy q with expert analysis and insight from lee sterling we'll be back tomorrow getting ready for a little bit of the west coast matchup we'll probably have a guest a little bit later on this week as well you should have to wait and see for the California slash Seattle trip. And we're going to have to come up with a different name for that. 
can't really call it Death Valley now because it is Death Valley plus Seattle, but it's okay. We'll get to all that later. We'll call up someone who knows marketing better than I because I don't know all about that. But anyways, that's it for this one of Lockdown Capitals. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.